Another um, experimental piece of evidence that actually helped to prove or coincide with this idea of quantums being absorbed and emitted in different energy levels, of course, is uh, Kirchhoff and Bunsen. Yes, Bunsen burner, Bunsen. Um, so meaning, especially if you look at the Bunsen burner, um, the blue flame or the different colors of flame is actually part in the fact that uh, there are atoms that are absorbing energy and releasing, of course, light energy within the visible range. Uh, so the quantum mechanical model, so this is the part where we're going to start talking about the electrons a little bit more differently. So um, electrons are no longer going to be discussed as being um, simply particles of matter. Now they are matter, of course, uh, they have a mass and they take up space. Um, however, the, the way that they move is not how uh, Bohr um, anticipated them as moving in terms of orbiting around the nucleus. In fact, they behave more like a wavelength of energy. So atoms um, are, are kind of funny in the way that they're, they are matter, but they behave as if they are energy. Um, so sometimes, sometimes you'll see them be referred to as wave-like um, particles. So they behave as if it's energy, but it's uh, really a, a, a piece of mass. So the space that we actually find an electron in is not, it, it's still deemed an energy level, of course, but it is no longer called an orbit. Okay, orbit is the thing of the past, but it's called an orbital, or sometimes referred to as an electron cloud. Okay, but orbital is a proper term. So what exactly is an orbital? So this is it right here. So orbitals are regions of space around the nucleus where an electron is most likely to be found. So first of all, the space around the nucleus is still mostly empty space. The electron, because it is no longer like a train kind of on a track here, the electron really is kind of moving around in this wave-like pattern in a certain area of space. Kind of refer to it as um, instead of being a, a train on a track, it's almost like bees around a hive. Okay, so let's say we have a beehive and the beehive is our nucleus. Okay, so the nucleus of the atom. And let's say my bee I'm going to use like a dot to represent it. The B is representing our electron. So let's say we were to have time elapse, let's say over the course of, you know, 10 minutes. And if we were to draw a dot or we'll put a little X everywhere where the B traveled in that 10 minutes. So let's say 10 minutes pass by and the B traveled here and here and here and here and here and here. Here and some, maybe we went over here to get a flower, some pollen from a flower, and then came back here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So the bee kind of went all around. But if you notice, most of the time, the bee was around this area. It could go outside that area. It's not locked in a cage here because it's empty space. But if we were to track the pattern of the bee, it's mostly in and around this space. That's exactly what an orbital is. An orbital is the region of space where the electron travels most frequently. Now, do we have a way of actually knowing where an electron is? Uh, actually, the answer to that is no. Um, are we able to predict where the electron's gonna be? The answer to that is no. Uh, so think of the B. Are you able to predict where this little bee is going to buzz off to next? No. Uh, so it's kind of funny. You have to realize that there's still quite a bit we don't know about electrons. So that's why we have this term most likely. So we are most likely going to find the electron in the orbital, but really, maybe not. Um, so uh, over here, these little dots are actually showing you, same as we did with that B, we, we mapped out the locations where the, uh, the B went. Same thing that happened here. The probable locations of the electron was kind of 
mapped out. Now you can see that there is a region, right, where there is maybe more electrons. Like this space here looks like the, there's more electrons than over here, right? So the orbital can take on different shapes as well, which we'll look at later on in this chapter. So don't worry so much right now about like the shape of the orbital or like what's going on inside the orbital. We're going to get to that. For now, I just want you to have an understanding in terms of um, what an orbital is, how an electron travels, um, and essentially what are the ideas behind this. So first of all, what helped to continue this idea of the quantum mechanics model of the atom was things we've already discussed. So the fact that quantums of energy, uh, so energy is quantized, meaning it's a specific amount of energy, and we know that that energy can be absorbed depending on the frequency. And here's our thing. So Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So, uh, so this is not Heisenberg from Breaking Bad. Um, this is the, I guess, the original Heisenberg. Um, Essentially, Heisenberg helped to contribute to essentially the understanding of the fact that we don't know much about where electrons are. <laughs> okay, so it's just it says it in the name, right? So it's uncertainty principle, meaning we're not sure. However, there is a mathematical um, essentially analysis that can be done to try to predict and determine the location of an electron, uh, but there are limits. Right? So we are exact, we're not exactly sure the location of the electron, uh, and we're not exactly sure at how quickly that electron is moving. All we can say is essentially what is the probability, or what are the chances of us finding that electron in that space, and that's known as its orbital. So it's the, we have a very high probability of finding the electron in its orbital. Okay, so I will mention here that, um, and this will come up again, but Imagine we were still looking at Bohr's energy level, right? So we have energy level number one, two, and three, let's say. Energy levels is still um, factual, okay? We still have energy levels. Really, the difference between Bohr and this new quantum mechanics is we don't have the electrons traveling in orbits anymore, right? So they are more like bees going around a hive instead of planets around the sun, um, and that the fact that we, we're not able to predict the electron movement, right? So energy level number one is a lower energy level than energy level number two. So the wavelength of an electron in energy level number one is longer. It has lower energy. As you go further and further away from the nucleus, you get higher energy. That should kind of make sense. Energy level number three is a higher level than energy level number one. So what happens is, remember those electrons are traveling as if they are energy particles. So they are traveling in wavelengths. So the electrons that are in the third energy level have a higher frequency or a smaller wavelength. So all those trends, all those ideas about the electromagnetic spectrum and everything we've discussed up until now, um, kind of come together in this new model of the atom. Okay, and we will continue to, basically from here on out, we will always be discussing the atom in terms of the quantum mechanical model.